Good morning, Mr. Chambers. Uh, could you give us uh, your outlook on equity market for the first month of uh, 2014? Great. Well, thanks. Thanks for having me. Um, I'm quite constructive on 2014 for European equities. Uh, that's not to say I'm constructive on all of equities in general. I think we've had a very strong run, and I think 2014 is going to be the year where there's going to be a lot more differentiation. But the great thing about Europe is not only is it cheap in terms of multi-decade lows of valuations and the fact that the companies have never been more global. So people are always trying to understand where is the inflection point of the European economy or the political landscape. And yet companies have never done as little in Europe as they have today. So today less than 46% of revenues um, in the MSCI Europe index, the closest proxy, um, uh, only 46% of the revenues come from, from Europe. And, and that's actually precipitously declining. And so when you marry the fact that you have very low valuations relative to other global indices, coupled with the fact that the companies have never been more global, and then the third pillar that I'm very constructive about, which is that Europe uh, has a lot of low-hanging fruit. So you have a situation in the U.S. where next year you could have probably 25 3% GDP growth, but yet only 6-7% earnings growth, according to consensus. Whereas in Europe, we are at best doing 1-1.1% 1, 1 .1 GDP growth, and yet our earnings growth is in the mid-teens. Why is that? It's because we have a lot of low-hanging fruit in Europe. In the U.S., we have very strong margins, very strong ROEs. Some bearers would argue, I'm not one of them, that we have peak margins, peak ROEs. Whereas in Europe, we actually have trough margins and trough ROEs. Um, a lot of people are against austerity, but at least austerity has given companies um, a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to boost productivity and boost margins. So that's why you have a situation where you have only 1, 1.1% 1 .1 GDP growth, and yet you have a lot of earnings growth. It's because there's a lot of low-hanging fruit in Europe. So in summary, I think next year is going to be the year of Europe. Uh, we've saw a, seen a little bit of outperformance in the last three to four months. I think that's only now beginning. You have structurally a region that has never been more global, never been cheaper relative to anywhere else, and then more importantly, has not had as low-hanging fruit as it sees today, uh, where you have a nice ramp in margins and ROEs. Thank you. And could you tell us uh, about the approach of uh, your fund, the Janus Europe Fund? Sure. Um, we do things a little bit differently and have been doing it for a very, very long time, uh, even beyond the five years track record of uh, the European Equity Strategy Fund. Um, we uh, don't play just lip service to the fact that Europe has never been more global. We're structured that way. So, you know, we have seven global sector teams and the analysts are divided into subsectors and they really look at their, their world in, in, in a global mindset. And so in our technology sector, for instance, um, uh, you know, our, our uh, um, uh, approach to investing in semiconductors or uh, EUV technology or, 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 or even keyboards is predicated on our global perspective of where value is being created in mobile handsets or, 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 or tablets uh, or, or even in telecom spend, um, you know, where the, the net capex is going. So not to talk about specific stocks um, uh, uh, today, um, our themes in technology are very much predicated on global value creation. And not once will an analyst come and ask, you know, what do you think about some election in Bavaria or what's happening economically somewhere? It really is geared towards global value creation. You know, you look at our healthcare team. Again, they're very geared in uncovering not just the big cap farmers, but very innovative uh, small and mid cap biotech companies that are really doing some very interesting stuff. In energy, um, uh, we have world-class explorers, not just in you know, in Northern Europe, but, uh, but, but a lot in Sub-Saharan Africa, Kurdistan, and some of these new frontier markets uh, for energy exploration. Um, in consumer, you know, the world's our oyster, be it brands, be it um, uh, uh, staples. Um, and then, of course, in, in, in telecom and financials and, and industrials, you know, we, we are looking very globally for serial value clear creators. So uh, that's how we're structured. And then more importantly, Given that our analysts uh, um, uh, have proven track records of adding alpha, uh, you know, I coalesce all these wonderful, great ideas of all the different analysts, uh, some of whom are in London, but a lot of them are, are located globally, including Colorado. Um, and I take these best ideas and I create a strategy that is high conviction, yet fully diversified and sector neutral uh, in large part. 
uh, such that I can maintain the high conviction investing and yet lower the volatility of the portfolio and give clients a best experience in terms of um, alpha uh, through really stock selection. A lot of people say they're bottom-up stock pickers. Um, we don't play lip service to that. We have quantitative models that show us uh, at any given time that 97% plus of our alpha is coming from pure stock selection and only 3% from sector leakage. So are you personally investing in Europe? Absolutely. 97% plus of my liquid money is in my fund. Uh, I've never been more convinced that it provides a very good avenue to value creation globally just with European companies and a much smoother ride than I would get uh, um, probably in other alternatives. Thank you.